Welcome to section 5.3, Other Composite Argument Properties. At the end of this section, you should be able to answer these questions. What are the odd and even properties for trigonometric functions? What are the cofunction properties for trigonometric functions? What are the composite argument properties for cosine, sine, and tangent? How can these properties be used to solve trigonometric equations algebraically? So you can see we're going to be adding several more properties to our toolbox to allow us to solve additional trigonometric equations. Let's start with the odd and even properties. Here's a graph of the cosine function. And as you can see, if we took a point on the curve here with a value of x and a corresponding value of y, we can see by the symmetry of the curve that if I took the opposite value of x, negative x, I would still have the same value for y, which is a characteristic of an even function. In algebraic terms, what that says is that f of x equals f of negative x. We get the same value for y whether we use x or negative x. Using the cosine equ equation specifically, we could write that as the cosine of x equals the cosine of negative x. So cosine is an even function. Let's look at the sine graph. Here, if I take a value for x and find the corresponding value for y, what happens here is that if I take the same value for x or negative x, on the other side of the x-axis, I get the opposite value of y. So negative x comma negative y. This rotational symmetry whoops, is the definition or a characteristic of an odd function where f of x equals f, negative f of negative x. And specifically for the sine, the sine of x equals the negative sine of negative x. The tangent function also has that rotational symmetry So the tangent of x is also an odd function, where f of x equals negative f of negative x. So the tangent of x equals the negative tangent of negative x. Now, the other three trigonometric functions, secant, cosecant, and cotangent, are all related to these three original functions. The secant, being 1 over the cosine, also displays the even symmetry across the y-axis. So the secant has the property f of x equals f of negative x, or the secant of x equals the secant of negative x, just like the cosine, since the secant is 1 over the cosine. The cosecant, on the other hand, is 1 over the sine, so we have our rotational symmetry again. same image if we rotate 180 degrees. So the cosecant, just like its reciprocal partner, the sine, is an odd function, where f of x equals negative f of negative x. And the cosecant of x equals the negative cosecant of negative x. Based on this, we've seen that the cosine and its reciprocal are both even. And the sine and its reciprocal are both odd. So, what do you think should happen with the cotangent function, since it's the reciprocal of the tangent function? Hopefully, you said that it also has that rotational symmetry and is an odd function. So, once again, 
f of x equals negative f of negative x, and the cotangent of x equals the negative cotangent of negative x. So just to summarize, of the six trigonometric functions, we have two that are even, the cosine and the secant. Our odd functions are all the remaining trigonometric functions, the sine, its reciprocal, the cosecant, the tangent, and its reciprocal, the cotangent. Now let's look at the cofunction properties. If I take a right triangle, and I'll label the sides J and K and the hypotenuse L, and label my angles, theta, with my right angle, and then the other angle would be 90 degrees minus theta, its complementary angle. Can you see where we're going with these cofunction properties? If I were to ask for the cosine of theta, we would say that that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which turns out in this triangle to be k over l. If I were going to be asking for the sine of the complementary angle, or 90 degrees minus theta, there it's the opposite over the hypotenuse, which again in this triangle turns out to be k over l. So the cosine of theta is the same as the sine of 90 minus theta, the complementary 90 minus theta. If we wanted to look at the relationship between the tangent of theta, which is by our SOHCAHTOA opposite over adjacent, so in this case, that would be j over k. And the cotangent of 90 minus theta, which is the reciprocal or adjacent over opposite, for 90 minus theta, the adjacent is j, and the opposite is k. So again, they're equal to each other. They're the same thing. So the tangent of theta is the same as the cotangent of the complementary angle 90 degrees minus theta. We could do the same analysis for the secant and the cosecant and find that, again, they are related by the complementary relationship. We can express that relationship in either degrees or in radians. 90 degrees and pi over 2 radians are the same angle. So we see that cosine and sine are related. And we can go in either direction, cotangent and tangent, or tangent and cotangent. And the same relationship holds true for the cosecant and the secant. Our final set of properties are the remaining composite argument properties. Now, we already know from the previous section that the cosine of a minus b is the cosine of a times the cosine of b plus the sine of a times the sine of b. Here are the remaining composite argument properties. The cosine of a plus b is the cosine of a times the cosine of b minus the sine of a times the sine of b. So instead of a negative plus, we now have a plus minus. The sine of a minus b is equal to the sine of a times the cosine of b minus the cosine of a times the sine of b. And the sine of a plus b equals the sine of a times the cosine of b plus the cosine of a times the sine of b. The tangent of a minus b is equal to 
the quantity of tangent A minus tangent B divided by 1 plus the tangent of A times the tangent of B. And the tangent of A plus B equals the tangent of A plus the tangent of B over the quantity 1 minus the tangent of A times the tangent of B. Let's take a look at the cosine of A plus B and see where that comes from. Well, the cosine of A plus B could be written as the difference of two angles. The cosine of A minus negative B. And the reason I'm rewriting the expression in that way is because I already have worked with and know that the cosine of an angle minus an angle is equal to the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. So I have that expression, but I can use now the pro even and odd properties of the cosine and sine to simplify this. The cosine of A remains the cosine of A, but the cosine of negative B, since cosine is an even function, can be replaced with the cosine of B, because the cosine of B and the cosine of negative B are the same. So plus the sine of A. Now the sine of negative b, since the sine is odd, means that I can replace the sine of negative b with the negative sine of b, which then allows me to simplify one more step. The cosine of a cosine of b minus the sine of a and the sine of b. The proofs for these remaining composite func argument properties are in your book, and I will provide links to some additional uh, proofs of those properties. So let's recap. What are the odd and even properties for trigonometric functions? Well, those properties are that the cosine and secant functions are even functions, while the remaining four trigonometric functions, sine, tangent, cosecant, and cotangent, are all odd functions. What are the cofunction properties for trigonometric functions? Well, the cofunction properties state that the cosine and sine are related. Cosine of theta is equal to the sine of the complementary angle 90 minus theta. The cotangent of theta is equal to the tangent of the complementary angle 90 minus theta. And the cosecant of theta is equal to the secant of 90 minus theta. And those relationships hold true whichever angle you choose to be theta. What are the composite argument properties for cosine, sine, and tangent? Well, those properties are all laid out right here. 